We, uh, we deleted some footage that we weren't done with, and um, so we missed Sam explaining what he did here with the jack shaft and the chains. Um, these are just parts from Go Power Sports, and the main thing to, to take into account here is just keeping this aligned with the rear axle and with the engine so that the chains are all nice and straight and they don't try to run off the sprockets or wear weirdly or anything like that. So um, basically, you can just use the rear axle as a straight point, which is what Sam's been doing for the whole build, and just measure from that to here on both sides and get it square to the axle. Um, and then, you know, tack it in place. And then the other factor is just where to put it to get your chains decently tight, um, you know, with the links that you need to, to get them the right length. So all that really matters is that they're loose enough to not be yanking on everything to get them on and then tight enough that when you put a tensioner on there the two sides won't rub together. He made this for the front seat uh, mount bracket to kind of elevate the front of it a little bit, lean the seat back for a more comfortable position. If you were building your whole frame with square tube then it'd be even easier. <laughs> Which we should have done. Should have done, yeah. We're just so used to using round tube because you can bend it nicely. We uh, didn't even think of the fact that square tube would be way easier if you're not bending. Next tutorial series. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, so today I worked on the clutch setup. So it's a little bit more involved of a step. We didn't cover it too much because it's going to be um, really dependent on the motor and uh, the clutch uh, setup you get. You'll probably have like a normal handlebar clutch like that and you could change that up. I just chose to use this one and make it work. So all I did is make a little bracket here that it mounted to and then I cut the tip of the uh, handlebar off, took a piece of uh, aluminum angle iron and then just kind of rounded that, shaped it a bit and it works pretty good. But um, so that doesn't matter too much. Like I said, the only thing to keep in mind is, uh, well, two things really, is how sharp this angle is gonna be when you're at your full turn. So that was pretty tough. And then also, if you have the body in this area, I started off lining it up top and that wouldn't have worked. I would have had to like cut most of the windshield out, which was a no-go for me. And then the cable would have been in a better position for not kinking but it wasn't a compromise I wanted to make with the body. Basically, you just want to keep in mind your body and how sharp this angle is on the clutch. That way, uh, because if it got too sharp in a corner, it might be way harder to pull the lever. Like that's really hard to pull the lever right there. So um, that's really the only thing you got to watch for is just make sure you can pull it and make sure it doesn't hit into anything. So next I'm going to work on the brake setup. So I'll start off by just mounting the uh, caliper and then I'll work on uh, a cable and foot pedal for this. So it's cable to hydraulic. So we'll have a cable going from here up to the front. So I'll mount that where it belongs <laughs> on the disc back there. And then I'll do some sort of cable up to a pedal up in this area. And, um, and then a mount for the master cylinder somewhere in there. And this part and all the other parts we're using here are gonna be in a link in the description um, from Go Power Sports. So you can check that out and see what you need. CAD for the brake caliper mount. So what I did is I ended up taking the pads out of the caliper. That way I can slide the bracket out. So I took the pads out, slid this bracket out, and then I used the bracket to mark the rotor in that same shape. That way one, and I used it to mark this. That way once I put this up here, I know 
roughly where the caliper should be. And now I can cut that out, put the caliper back together, make sure it's gonna fit around the rest of the body of the caliper. Once I know that's gonna fit, then I can cut this out of metal and uh, make the real mount. Last week I made this bracket or almost finished it and uh, so today I'm gonna weld it to the frame, drill a couple holes in to mount the caliper and then once I get this in here something like oh like that then I'll put another little support here for it and I'll be able to start working on mounting this uh, reservoir and then getting the linkage going from there to the pedal. And these sprockets are just number 50 machine chain. So there's something you could pick up at just like a, a local supply shop and uh, they're gonna be a pretty cheap option. And then what you would do is if you're using a, a stock like motorcycle chain, you'd have to grind the sprocket down cause it's a little bit thicker. But if you, uh, or you could get number 50, uh, just normal machine chain, and then it will just be a little loose on your front sprocket, which should be okay as well. So um, yeah, fast and affordable option you can get in town. And these ones that we're doing here, there's not gonna be a gearing change on this. So it's gonna have one change here and then one change to the back, but these are identical sprockets in the center. So that's just the way we were worked out the gearing for this. So I got this bracket in here and then obviously I can't, um, I don't want the caliper resting like right on it. I wanted a little bit of a gap. So I'm just gonna put a mark between the caliper and the bracket. And then when I take it out, I can mark where the holes are and then I'll just move the center notch over just barely. But this will help me line it up so that I'm not just guessing at what kind of position the caliper needs to be in with the bracket because they're loose fitting right now. So a little sharpen mark there. Now I can just line that back up and then I'll go ahead and mark these holes. And then when I center punch them, I'll just center punch them just slightly to the side. So then once it's drilled, this will have a gap between the caliper and the bracket. are coming right along. Yeah. So uh, before we really finalized if we're doing a pedal or a brake on the uh, handle, I got the body on again, but this time with the chair in. So we can see if it would be practical to fit a pedal under the hood. And it's possible for normal size shoot people. So Edwin might have some trouble, but I think that's what we're gonna go with. It seems like it will be the easiest and certainly um, uh, probably the best option for here because we're already going to have uh, another cable for the throttle anyways and getting a third cable in here is just going to make it really hard so i think we're going to do the pedal and make that work and now i know i could at least fit my shoe onto it so that gives me confidence before i did this whole thing put the body on and then had to rethink stuff what do you got there oh you know just the base of the shopping cart this does not come in the kit <laughs> no links to it but we needed a little thin piece of steel. We had a couple pieces of aluminum 
uh, to make this push rod or pull rod for the brake. And we have this laying around, so it'll be perfect. I'll cut out some of these little bars and then I'll be able to use that to pull the brake. And then I'll probably use some of this to shape the outside of the pedal too and then put a little plate on it. Doing our, due dil or our duty for the world and recycling. Perfectly good chopping parts. <laughs> brake pedal. Um, the first step we had to do was come up with some sort of pedal and we just stole that chunk of the shopping cart which is pretty sweet, saved some work. Then the next thing is we needed a bearing so I grabbed a piece of tube and then I just welded that tube to the pedal I assembly I made there. So now I'll make one more mount for this side and then we'll add a spring and after that part's done we'll be able to connect the rod back to the mast or the brake cylinder and that's it, that's, that's that, and we'll have a pedal and it should work great. Cool, so now that we have the pedal mounted, the next thing we'll do is we'll mount the brake master cylinder and then we'll uh, do the connection between them. So what I did for this is I wanted it pretty close to the body just for aesthetics. And so uh, this little push rod for the pedal will be a little bit of an angle, but that will be okay. So I just took the same um, tube I used for this, little uh, bearing there, cut a piece down and then welded a nut onto it. And then this is the Ethan special. You always screw that bolt in so when you're welding this nut to that, you don't mess up these threads or get any berries in there. It doesn't warp. So pretty simple. And then once I do that, looks like this. This part will be welded to the frame and then that bolt will come out and it'll be removable. Really simple, really strong and super fast. We got brakes. So, you know, it uh, it just was the shaft that we had left. So we did a heim joint on this side that's not adjustable, that's just welded directly on with a bolt through there. And then you could do a little section of the outside of a tie rod and then weld that tie rod to this shaft to make it simpler. Um, that looks a little bit ugly, so we just threaded the inside there. Either option's gonna work. And that's it, really. We'll need a return spring, maybe. That seems like it comes back on its own, so that's actually pretty sweet. Maybe not. And also, uh, the Heim joints aren't absolutely necessary. It's just with the off kilter of this, it's just gonna take up that weird angle and make it smoother. But you could just do it with a bolt, um, and that will work fine too. We'll do fuel now and finish hooking up the wiring. Borrowing this, we will put it back, don't worry. This is, uh, you know, Cinderella's fuel tank. So we're gonna hide it back here. It's gonna be pretty good for weight distribution and then we'll be able to put the battery by it. And then we have a cool idea that we'll do in another episode of how to make the seat like a quick release style, so. And so then I'll probably just hide the fuel pump under the seat too. So I'm a less you can see the better kind of guy. So I haven't even looked at this yet, but the outlet's on this side, so. 
maybe just in the middle, that'd probably be fine. saying making a hard push to try to get this running today so we just zip tied this fuel tank on the back got the fuel pump uh, installed pretty simple it just has one power wire that goes to your ignition key and then a ground onto the body that's working good got the carburetor on um, the air filter on so we're gonna try start it up Sounds healthy without a header. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> She's a runner. Unfortunately, that's all Sam had time for before his trip, but he'll be back this week and we should have this thing driving by next week. So stay tuned for that. Also, we got a new giveaway going on. We got this new merch. We got a buff. We got a cool lunchbox, a bunch of cool stuff. And every $5 you spend gets you an entry to win the Ameribraid Fastback Grinder. So definitely check that out. And we have a really cool video on Friday. We're finally carrying on progress with the Camaro. So you'll see that in a couple days here. Mm -hmm.